Hello everyone, welcome to another daily analysis. Today is November 17th, Thursday. So today's biggest headline is actually the uh, Federal Reserve Yellen's testify before the Congress. And of course, the biggest thing on traders mind is whether she is going to raise hike the interest rate in December meeting, which is coming up very, very soon. Now, we've been anticipated for the whole 2016, basically, to whether Federal Reserve is going to hike the interest rate. It has been such a headline for the basically the past 12 months, past 11 months. So today, you know, with the strong stock market and most important things, the fundamental data has already confirmed, actually has been confirmed, you know, from the past couple of meetings. But as I mentioned, the Federal Reserve is a more conservative uh, sentiment at this moment. So they were still basically waiting to see further evidence. But, you know, to be honest, everyone knows that they are actually waiting for the election because they didn't want to do anything before the election. Now the biggest uncertainty of the U.S. has been removed. The election has gone. So now there are really no other reason or barrier to prevent and raise the interest rate. Now there's two things we need to take into consideration. First, of course, is the data because the Federal Reserve has already seen they are data driven. Now they're looking at two most important data. One is inflation data. And uh, the other one is the employment data. Now these two data has have already been picked up very well. And today we have another employment data uh, coming out from US, which again is a very positive number. Uh, the CPI was a bit mixed, but overall it's all very steady. Now I understand when I say data, it's not one single single piece of data. It's a series of data you need to take a look to see the curves to see whether it's going in the right direction that they want it to go. So basically, the fundamental data has already confirmed and the election uncertainty has been removed. So what's left is really like like first Chairman Yellen herself say that unless there is any dramatic um, updates, otherwise uh, the rate hike it's very soon. So that's that's exactly her words. So uh, we can pretty much expecting a rate hike in December. And on top of that, with the new Republican Party, a pro-business sentiment, dollar is expected to be very strong, continue into 2017. Now, yesterday's Australia employment data was also a very positive thing. We have a lower unemployment rate. And although we have a low uh, uh, employment change, but if you take into uh, details, we actually have increased in the full-time employee other than the, more than the part-time. So the decreased number was actually from part-time, not from full-time. And full-time employee is always better because it's more stable for the economy. At London Station, we have the Palm Retail Sale, which was actually large surprise in all core retail, retail, month to month and year to year. All four data was a surprise, a positive deviation. I took this trade actually, if unfortunately uh, ended up a loser and I will get into more detail into that and what I decide to do to amend some of my trading styles. And then we have final CPI year to year from Euro was a positive number than expected. And then of course it's the US data as I just mentioned. Now, sentimentally, the equity market was once again all green. So uh, we can see the risk sentiment picked up again, once again. And the WTI end up as red. But if you're taking a look at the candlestick, you know that it actually surged higher during intraday. It tried to reach high, but failed. Now, what happened to OPEC is that, again, they have this preliminary um, talk right now ahead of their November 13th meeting. And of course, before the big meeting, OPEC member is always trying to be positive. So they remain very hopeful. But as you can tell, the market uh, did not really react in that way. You know, it, it's just so much doubt into this OPEC members meeting. And you know, neither do I. I don't really have much faith into their meetings. But we'll see what happened. But definitely, I'm not going to hedge into that or buying Canadian dollar ahead of meeting just because you know it's really uncertain of whether they are going to reach agreement or not so uh, 
that's basically what's the most important thing for today. And let's get into our chart. First thing first, uh, take a look at our daily chart of current trade. So Aussie News, you know, was large retrace yesterday. And I, I was saying that, you know, I have most likely you might get stop out and break even. We're very close to our stop out point, stop out point, which is here, but it retraced back. So of course this candlestick, it's a quite bullish candlestick. And on top of that, the risk sentiment has picked up again. So I am still very bullish toward Aussie. Basically the only reason I'm still holding this trade, but of course, I have now removed the stop loss once again to break even area. I'm actually going to tighten it to this, you know, one, two, three, four, five bars low at 1.0507. I'm going to tighten 1.0497. So that's what I'm going to do actually, just to make it higher here. Not really anything significant, you know, five pips more, but it's just my own way of rule of thumb to do it. And uh, another trait that we are currently in is, of course, cable. So cable, let me delete this one first. So cable, you know, not a whole lot of thing to say, it's still in the range bound. Uh, if you're looking at the price action alone, of course, I don't like it because we are not going anywhere and we are still looking more upside than downside. But the only reason I'm holding it again is because of the Federal Reserve's uh, today's sentiment and also the overall fundamental strength of US dollar is still very strong. And that's why I'm basically, and on top of that, look at what happened to British Pound is that you have a very good piece of fundamental data today, the retail sale. But no matter how many good data you have, you're just not going up. So that says that the fundamental data have been disregarded by the traders. And right now, people are really looking at the sentiment of the pre-exit. And on top of that, the US has better sentiment and better fundamentals. So that's why I'm still holding this one. But of course, I am soon going to tighten it maybe tomorrow. Uh, once this candle close, one, two, three, four, five, probably going to tighten it below here just to save myself for any you know any unexpected thing probably tighten to 1.2605 which is here yeah so i'm looking forward to tightening it to here and it just yeah again just just because it's going to weaken or i might just get out altogether because it's just not reacting the way i want it to be then you know a lot of time it really depends on how much risk I'm willing to, to take into this trade. If I cannot move to break even, and if it's still in this style area. So that's why, you know, I'm going to actually, there's one member ask me about how I trade, exactly how I do my setup, which I'm going to more detail into that uh, later on. Now, let me tell you my last trade, uh, Pang Yen. So I took this trade today, turned out to be a loser. And, uh, you know, it's really my own, my own uh, making, my own fault. The reason is because I, when you're doing a risk event trade, which I, I actually more and more uh, likely to not do it anymore. And the reason is because when you're doing a risk event trade, you really don't know where the direction is going to go. Yes, the fundamental data might come out as very strong, but I understand that market is composed by traders and traders already have their presumptions in terms of a lot of things. So for example, today's data was such a good data for British Pound. However, not only we did not go up, we actually retrace and give us another red candle. Now this is hourly. This is not the way I try to trade five minutes, right? During this kind of events. So this is the, this is the news event. We came out as very strong and then it's pretty much retraced for the whole hour. And I actually got stop out because of this retracement. But even if I didn't get stop out, look how long it's gonna go. Another two hours, two hours of monitoring this trade constantly in the drawdown. And then finally we pick up again at the end of the, uh, after basically we pick up after the New York, after the London station. So it has already nothing to do with this, this uh, momentum. So it, and you know, that's a thing. 
I just come to realize because a lot of mentor I follow all pre all prevent trading risk events. They all pretty much stay out of the news. And back then I really don't understand. I was saying like you know, should the news generate more momentum? Shouldn't that be a great opportunity to trade? But the thing is that you don't know how the traders come into the market with their presumption. So sometimes a news event fundamentally should work in a certain way, but it actually uh, does not. And then that's really, uh, you have no say because understand trading, you need not only the fundamental sentimental, you also need the price action to tell you the reaction of the trader because that's very important. You need to know what reaction people have. At the end of the day, that's what makes a market. It's the reaction of people, not the actual events. That's why you have this line saying that buy rumor, sell fact. Why? Because it's the reaction that, that makes money. So uh, if you wanna trade risk events, definitely you can trade it, but I would really suggest you to set up your stop loss way much bigger. Uh, or you can just trade it afterwards, maybe depend on you know how the market give you reaction. So maybe take a look at the candlestick afterward. Maybe you trade 15 minutes chart. So if you trade 15 minutes chart afterward, you look at this candle, you know that it's actually a bearish candle. So you don't wanna long at the moment. I mean, market is not ready. So that that way you can actually avoid a lot of uh, hopping into the wrong direction. And that certainly happened to me more than once. So or you can just not trade the risk event. So whether what am I gonna do is that I'm definitely not going to jump in anymore just because I realize it's just really hard to uh, predict the direction basically. Now, if I'm going to jump in, which I might in the future if it's a bigger event such as NFP, I will definitely leave a much wider stop loss. Currently my stop loss is 50 pips, so I'm, I'm probably gonna use 100 pips for this kind of risk events. Or I'm probably gonna trade after five or after 15 minutes, basically, just to let the market digest that piece of news. And after the 15 minutes, maybe I'll go with uh, the candlestick direction and then just grab again 30, 50 pips, if that's the case, or just not trade at all. So that's basically a few things I have in mind. But as for now, I definitely going to reduce my risk capital in this kind of risk event. So uh, let's get into our 28 candlestick pairs. Uh, sorry, let me get back on this. Again, first thing first is that, uh, you know, people ask me how I trade. So I'm going to explain the, exactly how I trade. So um, there is certain routines that I incorporate into my daily trade. Now, of course, first thing is that you understand what are you exactly, what are you trading? Trading is essentially, you are looking at the fundamental pictures. So I'm gonna write it here. So how I trade, okay, exactly how I trade. First thing first is I always look at the fundamental pictures. So the fundamental pictures is very important because that's really what's the foundation of currency, which is currency is just an economy of each country. So basically you're looking at foundation of each country of the economy and, and, and saying that which currency has more strength and weakness. So when you're looking at the fundamental picture, you know that which currency, basically what you're trying to do is find out which one has more strength and which one has more weakness. Now the good thing about fundamental is that it does not change overnight. It does not change throughout the day. Okay, it actually changed by weeks, and it actually changed by data. So it's very data driven. So when you go into the market, that's the first thing I do. I don't even look at the chart. Basically, every time you see my daily analysis like this, it's come. It came out from reading the news. Came out from reading all the economic release that happened today. So that's the first thing I do. I don't even open up my chart. I don't even open my, my brokerage. I actually open up my news feed. And the first thing is just to read, read, read. So I understand and give myself a sort of analysis of the day. So first thing I understand is the fundamental picture. 
what is the strength and weakness? What what kind of data has been released today? And are those data strong enough to change the fundamental stance? That's the third thing. Second thing is I look at the sentiment, the sentiment, the sentimental picture. Now, what do I mean by sentimental picture? It's really the news, you know, how are people react to certain news? Because I understand news, news are written by journalists and the journalists have their own emotions, their own point of view. So you, what you're trying to do is not only reading the news content, you're trying to do, you're trying to see which, what type of news become the headline and how are the journalists writing those news. And that's very important to understand is the market having a, a positive sentiment. Is the, how are people going to react when they look at this headline? For today, if you're looking at the headline, it says dollar scale to 13 and a half year peak on Yellen's and US data. So just by looking at this headline, as a person who never trade, they're looking at that, the first thing come to their mind is that, oh my God, US dollar is going higher. It's going higher. So that's a sentimental strength into the US dollar. Just looking at the news. And if you're looking at the news, it says Canadian dollar strength, strength to a one week high as oil climbs. Now, like I mentioned, WTI also today try to climb up but fail. But that's a fundamental, that's a technical. If you're just looking at the news, it says that Canadian, Canadian dollar strength to one week high. That's actually not a negative sentiment for Canadian dollar. So by the, the, reading those news, you, you sort of understand the picture of what happened. And the other thing is looking at the correlation. Correlations with, with other financial instrument. So you're looking at the WTM, which is the oil market. You're looking at the equity, mar equity market both in Asia, both in Europe and North America. So you're looking at all these equity market, try to see, uh, try to see if the stock market is going higher or lower. So again, you can read this news and will give you a lot of sentiment as whether people have more confidence. I understand the market composed by people and currency trading is just part of the instrument. You can definitely, and guys, by the way, I'm teaching you this way. It's very transferable. That means you can trade this way into stock market, in futures market, in currency market. Okay. An instrument itself is just a tool. Once you understand, adopt the way to analyze the market in this kind of bigger micro perspective, you will on your way to become a very capable investor and trader. And this is really a great tool you can carry with you for life. And that's what I, I learned from learning how to trade fundamental. And the biggest advantage is really, you know, back then I'm a technical trader. Back then I'm so big on strategy, so big on back tasting. And those things certainly have their um, have their advantage. And I, I definitely think those things are great. But having a fundamental knowledge and sentimental knowledge in terms of tr looking at the big picture, you, you, you become very capable of becoming a trader and investor. So you really carry this data with you in the future if you want to do anything else. If you want to go into real estate, if you want to go into buying selling business, if you want to you know, venture your way into stock market, into other equities trading, it is a very uh, good way to train your logic mind, basically. So once you have these two things, then I will actually get into the chart. So again, I, before I even read the new, I'm not going to open up my chart unless I read the news today, understand the data today, and then I, I actually start writing my analysis way before I go into a technical chart. So the third thing, of course, is what 90% of traders love most, which is the technical analysis. Now, technical analysis is very, very important. But it's important not because it's a miracle or like a holy grail. It's important because it's a reaction. It's a reaction of the traders. And that's it. Technical analysis, it basically tell you what had happened from this moment to the past. I repeat, to the past, not the future. Okay, so technical analysis, it just tell you a picture of the past. Why is it important? Because it's reaction of the trader. 
how people are react to the fundamental data and the sentimental pictures. And those reactions are journaled in this technical chart. And understand because the end of the day, the market is composed. Market is composed by traders. So these traders are really the people that drive the market, drive the price, drive the momentum. So you have to understand how are they react to certain things. That's why if you only trade fundamental alone, you cannot really be a best trader. And I always say that if fundamental alone works, then all your economic professor are millionaires. The reason is because fundamental is telling you the fact, sentimental telling you the emotions, but technical tell you the actual action of people. And that's why these three are equally important. So I never really discard any one of them. And I never like to argue to people whether you know technical is better or fundamental is better for me. Why not to have all of them? Because the more uh, tools you have, the more information you get, the more uh, cl the clear direction you can see. So these are the three most important thing is to read the data, the actual economic data, and then read the news, read how people are writing the content, the news and the headline. Understand how are the market basically going? What, what are the feeling, the sentiment? And then looking at the chart to understand what is the reaction of people who are actually in this market? How are they react to the fundamental data and the sentimental picture? Now, once you have those, you can start looking for opportunities. An opportunity will re re reflect itself to you in the technical chart. Now, I'll give you some examples. For example, and I'm sure a lot of people are all very good at this. You know, if you're looking at this candle, of course, it's a bearish engulfing. It penetrated to a lot of new areas. So it signal a sale. Now, when you're looking at this candlestick, it signal a buy, right? So all this is just very simple. Don't think technical is some, again, it's not some holy grail. It's not that complicated. If you're looking at this green candle, it signal a buy, right? So. That's basically what it tells you, really. There's nothing more to look into it. It just tells you what is this signal. But does this signal buy and you just buy it? No, you gotta look at whether this reaction is in line with the fundamental and sentimental analysis. If you're looking at this one, you gotta look at if this, if this candle signal a buy, if this a company with the right fundamental and sentimental. So that's basically how I trade nowadays to incorporate these things. Now, a little bit trick, of course, is that I still like to buy at low and sell high. So that's why I don't like to buy at this kind of breakout. And there's nothing wrong to buy at this kind of breakout. But personally, you know, I, I, I do like to have a more room to go. So that's just few things. And those things, again, it's really depend on your personality of how you trade. Uh, for example, look at my Aussie Newsy trade right now. So currently, I had my one on one already at here, and I could have just pick it, you know, make two percent and be happy. But the reason it's really depend on how fundamental and sentimental faith, how strong I have, how strong confidence I have toward certain currencies. But whether you're going to take one on one, whether you're going to let the trade run, whether you're going to adjust your stop loss, adjust your stop loss, that's really the art part of trading. That's really depend on your psychology. And then which comes to the last uh, missing piece of trading, which is your risk analysis. Now risk analysis essentially is really, it's really hard to teach because risk means different things. Okay, risk means different things for different people. And that's why it's hard to teach. Because 2% might be nothing for you, but it's a lot of risk for me. And 0.5% might be nothing for me, but might be very risky for you. And two risks, $1 to make $1 might be a risky thing for you, but it might not be a risky thing for me. So same thing to risk $1 to make 20 cents might be 
okay for you. So again, that's where the hard part comes in. It's where your risk, basically your personality, how are you uh, digest when you are in risk, when you're facing risk. And that thing cannot be taught is because you have to experience in the real market with real money to know exactly who you are and how are you reacting to drawdown? How are you reacting to break even? How are you reacting to that the money run or pick a money too early on the table? So all these things have to really experience by you and those all these things don't be surprised they change throughout your life because they are all from the element of your life which will affect your psychology which affect exactly how you deal with risk so basically that's it so what we can really learn or or, or, or it's really t teachable is really fundamental it's very simple sentimental and technical are really very simple way to teach but when you start trading the risk analysis or you can say the psychology the psychology of trading is really a lifelong lesson that you have to constantly learn and reflect and that's where the mentorship comes in for me personally having a mentor the really most important thing is the, this psychology of trading because you gotta you gotta have someone to talk to someone to really give you some advice of whether you're going to take certain risks and you always have to understand you cannot separate trading from your life and the most the reason is because your psychological aspect of your life will affect your trading and that is actually the most important thing of this risk analysis so put it into more practical sense another risk analysis i do whenever i take in a daily trade is that i always look at what comes after i take the trade so for example i had this great green candlestick back then and I already have a good fundamental and sentimental analysis saying that Australian dollar should be way much stronger than New Zealand dollar. But I did not take this trade. And the reason is because I know in two days, I will have an RBNZ central bank decision. So I don't, for me, that's a very big risk of uncertainty. So for me, even though my one, two, three analysis are all green, all give me a signal to go, but the risk analysis, you know, for me, it's too risky because I have a big event. I might get stopped out. I, I might, anything can happen in this kind of central bank meeting. So I stay out and guess what? That's exactly what happened. It actually still went to my direction. But if I did not stay out, I will very much get stopped out maybe somewhere here during this huge long tail, during this whip sound. So that's the thing. Because of risk analysis, I avoid a risk because of that. So if people ask me, why don't I take this trade? You know, this is a great candle, everything is great, but because of the risk. So I always actually put this risk analysis as my number one criteria. So don't be surprised. Sometimes you say, hey, everything is great. Why did I, uh, why don't I take the trade? Or why don't I break my rule? Or why don't I do this and that? Actually, it's nothing to do with that. It's just because I'm very in tune with my own psychology. So as long as I know number four is not in the right place, then I'd rather not trade because I have more chance to lose. And that's why I say you, with the, first, with the three things you have in mind does not make you a great trader. That's why people have a great strategy that, that they still cannot make money. That's why people with like, like I keep saying economic professor have great economic fundamental knowledge still cannot make money. That's why people are so good at technical analysis cannot make money. It's because you cannot ignore the number four, which is your psychology of trading is really your risk analysis. And it really means different things for different people. So unless you get this in line, unless you get this in check, otherwise trading will be a very hard journey for you. So for me, Again, number four, it's a constantly dynamic change. And that's basically how I trade the financial market. I know it sounds a little bit vague, but you know, just because one member asked me. So if you have more questions, you know, feel free to let me know if this explanation is clear enough. If not, you know, feel free to let me know. I can make more uh, explanation in my video. So just to recap, I look at the fundamental picture. I look at the sentimental news 
And then finally, I look at the technical reaction to see whether I have an entry point. And then I look what events are coming up tomorrow or in 48 hours. Are they risky enough? So it doesn't matter. All, not all risk events are created equal. So I'm not going to refrain from trading just because one employment data is coming up. It really depends on how important that risk event is. And, and do I think it's risky for me? And then number four is I always ask myself, you know, whether it's a good trade to take. So every trade I take, another thing is that I always have a trade journal. I always have a question that I need to ask myself, you know. So if you're looking at my 10 questions for every trade, I always ask myself, why do you want to enter this trade? What are the fundamental, sentimental and technical analysis? What is the catalyst or was there any catalyst? Are we overbought or oversold? So this just prevent myself from buy high and sell low. Okay, what is the risk? Okay, it's very important. How will you minimize the risk? How am I going to manage this trade? You know, what could happen in the next few days, weeks? Are you able to handle the drawdown, especially in daily trade? And finally, I ask myself to think again, do you really want to take this trade? What happened in my life now? Are you thinking with your logic? Are you emotionally stable now? This is very important for myself because once you understand, you gotta really always reflect in your own psychological life. And then after I take the trade, I ask myself, what have the market react to the result? Why do I think, what do I think will happen from now and why? And then why am I still in this trade? Would I get into this trade if I'm flat right now? So all these are questions that I ask myself before during and after I take a trade. And I know it's, again, it's a very different way of trading, but again, I train myself, I think it's a very valuable tool to train yourself to think in a very micro, very logical way. And because once you train it, this kind of independent thinking, this kind of critical thinking really enable you to take that skill with you, and venture into many different market or business ventures in the future. So you are basically trading every day, trying to make money, of course, but you also train your mind to be sharp, to think like a trader, to think independently. And for me, that's the most valuable skill you can learn from trading, okay? Because if you only follow a strategy of you only doing mechanical trading, you will still, of course, make money. And I don't doubt that, uh, but I think you're missing a very, important or it, for me a very interesting part of this analysis is really to 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 look at how you create how, how to train yourself in the critical thinking basically okay so i hope that explained well but if not feel free to let me know other than that i'm just going to quickly look at the trade today to see if we have any opportunity so euro pound as mentioned still in this sideways movement and uh you know really don't have anything to say same as euro swiss euro dollar once again we drop again and that's why i say it's very very strong market for us dollar what is the next support zone to be honest it's actually it's everything is a support zone at this moment so at this moment the us dollar is just so strong enough all this support has been disregarded but we'll see what happened of course we have been done consecutively for one two three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine days of red candles. And we might have a reversal, but we might not. So all the things that no one knows. All I know is that fundamental and sentimentally dollar is very, very strong. Your Aussie, again, another you know, indecisive day. Nothing really happened. Eurocat seems to have pulsed a little bit. Now, is that good enough for me to buy Euro sell cat? Absolutely not, because I don't have any uh, strengths or weakness analysis for these two currencies. So I'm, I'm going to stay out. Euro New Z, again, another indecisive move movement. And finally, Euro Yen, another indecisive movement. Look at Pong, Pong Swiss, again, nothing really, it's just a sideways movement. Cable, as mentioned, we're still in this trade. I gotta be honest, I don't like what I see. The reason is because the dollar is so strong nowadays, but we are not going anywhere, right? So the dollar has been strong versus Euro. Just look at that, 
right? The dollar has been strong versus Japanese yen. The dollar has been strong versus Australian dollar versus New Zealand dollar. But when it versus British pound, it's basically going nowhere. So for me, actually, I am going to get out of this trade. I have made my decision just because tomorrow is Friday and I don't want to hold this trade over the weekend. Now I have little faith into it. So I am actually going to get out now just right in front of this uh, video. I'm going to get out of my trade while I still have a little bit profit and break even. So I am out at my cable trade. Okay, so I'm out. Okay, I'm out of here. All right, so let's keep going. Uh, Pang Aussie. Pang Aussie again, actually a strength into British Pound versus Australian dollar. Pound Cat. Another actually strength into British Pound versus Canadian dollar. Now this is actually not a bad signal for me because we do have a lot of good strengths into British Pound. And I actually think, you know, just by looking at the fundamental picture, sentimental picture, British Pound is actually seems like it might keep going up. Now the only thing to do any Canadian trade is really depend on the uh, the OPEC meeting because everything can happen between now and then and that's the risk for doing Canadian dollar trade. On top of that, we might have, I remember correctly, we should have a Canadian risk event coming up tomorrow or not. Let's take a look at it. Yeah, we have a core CPI tomorrow. So I don't want to do anything. And that's it. This is an important data. So I don't want to do anything prior to this kind of risk events. So that's why I most likely will stay out. Pound New Zealand, really, again, you can tell like British Pound actually have a quite good strength. Pound Yen, another update for Pound Yen. Let's keep going. Swiss Yen, again, another basically a very negative sentiment for Japanese yen at this moment and of course the risk is off risk of sentiment on, and on top of that the BOJ has came out uh, I think come out last night to start their bond buying program so of course that's going to be very negative for their currency now again it's a very breakout trade I'm actually in this trade during a, a intraday trade, sentiment trade. So, uh, like Aussie Swiss. Okay, we can see that Australian dollar, it's still losing its momentum and strength. And really, I, I really don't have any fundamental uh, reason to explain it, to be honest. And I know the only thing that people are selling Aussie Again, it's because the Chinese speculator are dumping the commodity, dumping the Australian dollar right now. Aussie yen looks like a very good uh, policy movement, but not a signal for me to enter. And cash Swiss and cat yen. New Z Swiss, New Z dollar. New Z cat and New Z yen. So that's it, guys. Again, like I say, you know, when you're doing a daily trade, the most important thing is the risk analysis, and you gotta have a lot of patience because you gotta let the thing play out, right? So for me, uh, I'm, I'm patient is always my my biggest downfall. So for me, you know, I'm still like I say, I don't know whether I'm doing the daily trade. I should take one on one or one on two, or I should just trading my stop loss. All these things, again, it really depends on your risk personality. How are you, how are you, how do you react in terms of risk and reward? But for me, this is always a constant lesson for me to learn. So I hope you can, you know, discover more about yourself, basically know what works for you best. And again, if you have any question, feel free to uh, comment below or let me know. Other than that, I'll be back tomorrow for another daily analysis. Okay, thank you very much, guys. Bye-bye.